Welcome to Inspiring Business with your host, Mark Bullock, who is the co-founder of Videosocials.net and of VideoInterviewPodcast.com. In every episode, Mark interviews business and organizational thought leaders who share their stories of how they inspire others by making a difference. You can find this show on Videosocials.net and YouTube, LinkedIn, Facebook, and almost any podcast platform of your choosing. Welcome. And today I have to say I'm delighted uh, to reconnect with a, a friend of many years, um, Dean Mercado. And uh, if you don't know, Dean is the founder and CEO of both Online Marketing Muscle, the Dean Mercado Company. And over the years, Dean has published hundreds of articles in the vein of small business growth and success. Most impactfully, though, Dean has co-authored a number one best-selling book called The Mind Stretch. Dean, such a pleasure to have you. Oh, Mark, what can I say, buddy? It's been way too long, right? This is awesome it, to reconnect with you. Absolutely, because um, I, I remember us sitting, you know, in in your uh, in your home office. Yeah, we were both reading all the books, taking all the courses, uh, doing, do, you know, stretching ourselves, uh, and the beginning, um, really trying trying to figure out, you know, what carve out how how are we going to make a difference in the world? You know, what what what, what 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 were what were we going to do and We've taken different but very synergistic paths, right? Uh, and uh, and uh, and I'm just I'm just delighted to hear. But you know, rather than us just remin reminiscing, um, I always like to ask my guests, you know, what's your story? And and uh, you know, the first question that I want to ask you is, you know, who is Dean Mercado, and um, how did you come to be? I mean, what? Because uh, it's it's an interesting story. It's, an, it's a loaded question. It's a big question. Um, and you alluded to some of it that was hugely impactful. I came out of corporate America. I, I, I have all the college degrees and all of that fun stuff. I've got my MBA. I got that stuff. But then I spent the last uh, 30 or so years unlearning a lot of what I learned in college because it really didn't apply to the world of entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. uh, so I spent about a dozen years or so in corporate America, realized my feet were sleeping, I was making a lot of people a lot of money and I just wasn't happy. I was flying around the world, doing different things, running multi, 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 multi-million dollar projects around the world, ran some great groups of sharpshooting technologists. And then I was just like, if I could just create a small piece of that for myself and just do it the way I want to do it, instead of always having to follow the way somebody else was doing it, life would be grand. I couldn't, I felt at that point in my life, I was, stepping into my late 20s early 30s um i couldn't it's really more my early 30s i couldn't really create the life i wanted i was finding it difficult to to get married the thought of having kids was ridiculous because i wouldn't have been home you know i grew up in a household where you know i have four brothers there were five boys and dad worked all day every day and overtime and at night he was doing the extra side jobs to try and put food on the table for five boys you try that you know, so I look at that now and I'm like, thank God he did that. But back then I didn't get it. I didn't understand. I just, why isn't dad here? Why is he missing my baseball game? So my philosophy was I'm not going to create a family if I can't be there. I have to be able to show up the way I want to show up, be present the way I needed to be present for me and for the kids mm -hmm. and for whomever I was going to marry at the time. So coming out of corporate America, I had a guy who worked for me. He was a high-end guy. And he came up to me one day and he said, look, he said, you're one of the two smartest people I've ever met. Uh, you need to do something and you need to meet my cousin, who's the other smartest guy. And then you two figure it out. So I was like, OK, I, my, I had always had the entrepreneurial bug. I was the kid washing all the cars, mowing all the lawns, shoveling all the snow, anything to make a buck to be able to pay for the movies that week. Right. Because things were tight growing up with four other brothers. You know, dad can only supply and provide so much. So, so I said, okay, we took it on and, and I ended up uh, leaving corporate America at that time, forming a company with that guy and the guy who actually recommended and put us together. And uh, what I realized very quick, I didn't know, I no longer love technology the way I once did. So, you know, much like you, Mark, we have that history of we're doing servers and routers and switching and all kinds of technology was big back then. Uh, mm -hmm. I grown to hate it. it wasn't me anymore it just didn't resonate 
Right. It was fun while it lasted, but I was ready for the next iteration of my life. And so that company that I created, I went with it for a couple of years and it just really wasn't clicking. And the partnership wasn't really clicking. You know, right. I was off with this vision and they had a completely different vision and the vision we co-created, they didn't follow it. So mm -hmm. my wife finally came to me and she's like, all right, not happening, dude. And this is about the time you and I really connected was mm -hmm. when, when I first had started in my own technology company. You were running a technology company at the time. Um, I believe at the time, I don't remember what the name of it was, but it's going way back. And, yeah. and things started changing, right? The more conversation that you and I started engaging, I look at that point in time as pivotal for both of us because we were co-creating yep. We were feeding off of each other. We were both going down a yep. similar journey at the time of where we were and what we wanted to create and why. And we were unclear on certain things. We knew there were things we needed to do to grow ourselves and to get clarity around what it was we wanted. So that was pivotal. Out of that came online marketing muscle, if you remember. Yeah. I remember bringing the concept up to you and you were like, holy crap, dude, this is, you got to run with this. And, and I did. And that company is still in existence to today. So we must have done something right. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it, it required and started with that level of thinking, willing to ask tough questions, willing to have you drill me around that concept of, well, why? What do we want from that? What do you want to, what do you want to have happen here? Why is that so important? And then we both went through things like Landmark and we really started honing and sharpening our skill sets. I got mentored by some of the best in the business too back at that time, uh, you know, between Jay Abraham and Robert Allen and Mark Victor Hansen and Laurel Langemeyer and, and you name it. I was shelling out the dollars left and right to try and get something that I felt I was missing. I didn't know what it was. I started mm -hmm. getting a taste when you and I were talking, you know, and it was like, I know there's something I'm missing because I had all the formal schooling. Why is this entrepreneur thing so difficult? Right. And then I started to realize that it was me, that it was me in my own way. And in order for me to succeed in this thing called entrepreneurship, I had to get out of my own way. I had to recognize that I was the problem. I was the bottleneck. Not easy to do yep. when you come out of big corporate America and you had uber amounts of success in big corporate America. Um, I had all the degrees. I thought I was the you know what. Ego was totally in the way. Yeah. So it started releasing through my conversations with Mark when we were going back and forth, right? Back in that yeah. time, we started to let it go a little bit. And it wasn't easy for me to become vulnerable. Remember, I was, I had four brothers. Right. I was the fourth in line. I was the baby for a long time. My youngest brother came many years later. But showing weakness and vulnerability was not an option. <laughs> with three older brothers, I would have got my rear kicked all over the place, right? You know, if I showed weakness. So I grew up with the mentality that I had to have this persona of being tough, that I could handle it. No problem. I got this, you know, you can't yeah. beat me. So I had my story and I was sticking with it. And what I didn't know was what I didn't know. I didn't know that it was holding me back and that it was stopping me from getting where I wanted to go. And it took many, many years of work on myself, of coaching, and getting clarity around it. I knew, you know, what I learned was I didn't need any more skills. I had all the skills. <laughs> yeah. You know, and that's, that's a mistake a lot of us make in entrepreneurship. Yeah. Um, we, I just got to learn that one extra marketing thing. If I just knew how to do this one more thing around list building, life would be great. Okay, well, yeah, maybe there are some skills you need to sharpen. But I can tell you, and this is a framework, I'll talk a little bit about our methodology later if you'd like, uh, with our Colonial on a framework, the outer band of that framework is mindset. Mm -hmm. And your business will only grow to the degree you do. That was a painful, expensive lesson for me. You know, because despite having spent money on the college degrees, I then had to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on coaching, courses, mentorships to try and all come back to that one concept. 
that it was me yeah. as the issue, right. right? So kicking and screaming uh, the whole way through. Uh, I finally got some clarity. And I'd like to think that I'm in a little bit of a better place today than I was those many years ago. Um, not an easy journey, I could tell you that much. So part of where online marketing muscle morphed, we started out as a, as a marketing, digital marketing company back mm -hmm. in the day. This is in the early right. 2000s. I was right. laughed at by my peers by starting an internet company. The internet's a fad, they were saying to me. What are you, stupid? I thought you were so smart. You have all these degrees and you're going to start an internet company? The internet's a fad. It's not going to be here. Really? Okay, well, you know, I, dare I say it, but who's laughing now? You know, uh, almost 20 years later. You know, I guess you could say I was a little bit of a pioneer back then, but I took the hits. I took the lumps. I, I was looking as Wayne Gretzky, the great Wayne Gretzky used to say, I looked at where the puck was going. And I went to where the puck was going, not to where it was. Right. Right. So I was looking ahead. I was looking forward. And thankfully I was because that allowed me to create a company that almost 20 years later is still here. But what had happened to me, there was a shift that happened again. And there's been many pivots over the years. We've redefined ourselves many times over those yeah. years. Out of online marketing muscle came a, a call from our clients that they wanted more. They were missing that something, that something that I had found, and that was the coaching. It, was, it wasn't enough to tell them, hey, there's the diamond mine over there. Go get it. Right. Right. You know, this is all you need to do is go and just walk in that diamond mine. Go get it. And they, were, they still weren't even good with me saying, okay, well, you know, here's the instructions on how to go in there to go find. Here's the map to find it. Here's the instructions to how to mine the diamonds while you're in there. It's still not enough. What they were looking for at the time, and this is going back almost 20 years ago, mm -hmm. they would start asking for, can you just grab my hand and hold my hand and walk me in right. to the diamond mine? I'm sick and tired of everybody telling me where it is and why I'm so stupid and I can't have it. Can you just take me in there? Mm -hmm. And when we're in there, can you just show me how to identify the diamonds? And when I identify them, can you show me how to mine them? And after we mine them and we pull them out, can you show me how to polish them up and bring them to market and make them work for me? Right. Well, absolutely. And that's where the coaching and mentorship side of online marketing muscle started. And then I started to recognize that it was in the way of what online marketing muscle's mission was. So at that point, I started thinking about the separation, getting Dean out of the way of online marketing muscle and getting online marketing muscle out of the way of Dean. Let me grow my path, let the other company grow its path, still maintain both. So out of that came the Dean Mercado company. We formalized mm -hmm. it probably four or five years ago, something like that, mm -hmm. where we formalized it and allowed it to take on its own persona. So that I always thought that if you're going to build a business, build it as if you're going to sell it, right? And it's something mm -hmm. you and I talked about years ago, Mark. Yep. And so with online marketing muscle, I don't know if I want to own that another 10 years. Who knows? So I'm building it as if I'm going to sell it. If Dean Mercado, the coach, was the main revenue stream of that company. I would never be able to sell it without going with the package. Right. I did not want that. I don't want to work for someone anymore. I'm virtually right. unemployable at this point <laughs> in my life. I get you that. Are, right? Yep. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and it's, you know, we kind of march to the beat of our own drum, so to speak, at this point in our mm -hmm. life. I feel like my calling is very different than following somebody else's wish and path and desire. I need mm -hmm. to follow mine. Yep. You know, that's my calling at this point in my life. And it doesn't come without struggles, folks. As I know I can attest to, and I'm sure, Mark, you can too. Oh, yeah. We kicked and screamed and fought our way to get here. It wasn't, it, it was simple, but it wasn't easy. What's, and let that digest. <laughs> it was simple, but it wasn't easy. Now, that doesn't mean yeah. don't do it. Right. I'll wholeheartedly stand behind it and say, if you've got that entrepreneur bug in you, Go for it. Give it everything you got because the reward at the end, if you truly give it everything that you have, is the most rewarding right. thing you'll ever experience in business. Right. When you move, when you touch, move, and inspire somebody, and not the cliche, you've heard people say that before. I mean, truly, have you ever touched, move, and inspired somebody? I know you have, Mark. 
because that started with you co-coaching me at that time, you know, that it was very impactful at that time, you know, yeah. and I know you know that and it doesn't, you know, it's, it's probably nice to hear it again, you know, but it's true. And the fact that I remember it and I remember it so vividly, it was impactful. It was hugely impactful at a critically important time for me at, yeah. you know, when, when that was happening, it's part of what catapulted me into that next iteration of my growth, my journey, what I was right. meant to experience. Right. So, um, now the coaching side of my business, wow, I never thought I was going to be a coach, Mark. I never thought <laughs> that. And I know, you know, that I wasn't talking about being yeah. a coach back then, yeah. you know, it happened yeah. and it took me a while to embrace it. Now I embrace it wholeheartedly. Now I can honestly say I've spent well over 10,000 hours one-on-one -on -one coaching people. I'm not talking about getting in front of a room of a thousand people and coaching them. I'm talking about one-on-one -on -one right. hours. Right. And it's probably closer to 15, 20,000 because we're talking almost 20 years right. of doing that every week, all week, every day, all day long. I've been working with entrepreneurs, growth-minded entrepreneurs, right. helping them get past their issues, their challenges, helping them find their passion, helping them find their journey, their path, helping them travel that path, watching them blossom into who they were meant to become. I have the, the wonderful distinction now to be able to say and see some of my clients bud into to having huge impacts now on their coaching clients. They became coaches mm -hmm. because they saw what was going on they realize, you know what? I don't resonate with my business either. I'm going to dump this thing. I'm going to sell it and I'm going to do what you're doing. Great. Because one of the stipulations I always told everybody I worked with was that if you learn and you, you take anything away from what I give you here, mm -hmm. my expectation is that you will teach it to someone else. My expectation is that you will share it. <clears throat> if you hoard it, you'll never get another thing from me. If you turn around and you gift it, then you'll get plenty from me. I'll give you whatever I have. I've got a system for that. It's yours. Well, and that's right? kind of the way the universe works, right? I mean, you know, the, the it's a hard it's a hard lesson learned, but it's like the more generous that you are, um, with kind of the stipulation of pay it forward. You know, right. it's it, it it's it's uh, and we've got some other questions that we want to get to, and I could literally sit and listen to you all day because it's, there's so much reminiscing going on, yes, and and and, uh, and and for and for myself, you know, the questions that we asked each other, the the challenges that we presented each other, you know, right. back 20 years ago, um, you know, for me as well, helped to, helped me to figure out who I was and who I wanted to be, and right. and. Uh, um, I'm fortunate in the fact that I've, I've really crystallized that. So, um, you know, I, I, before we actually jump into what, you know, obviously you're doing coaching, obviously you've got online marketing, so you've got an online, online marketing company, et cetera. And, and we'll dig a little bit further into that and, and your system uh, in a moment. But, you know, we, we both kind of launched um, through experience. Yes. Um, you know, we we stopped the you know, let's figure we had to figure everything out and cross all our T's, dot all our I's, get, you know, and 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 and, and have perfect knowledge before we could actually launch. And I think we both kind of gave up on that and said, look, we just got to We, we got to do something. Right. So right. And, and, and and we both went off in, di in different directions and basically are, are, are doing very, very similar things. Um, but you know, our company, which is practice marketing incorporated has three brands and three services. Um, and those services are phoneblogger.net, in which we know that people need to be able to get content out. That's authentic to them, original content from them, not canned information, not stuff that's pulled together through AI, but actually presents them and their expertise on a regular basis to their clients. So blogging, you know, 15, 20 years ago was where it was at. Uh, this is before podcasts really took off. This is before video took off, uh, et cetera. And, uh, and that's still going and that's still going strong. So we, we basically call 
interview our clients for five or 10 minutes on the phone, record that, transcribe it, edit it for them. And we're their, we're their editors, their publishers, and, and, and get it out online so that they actually get it done rather than spending hours and hours to write and edit and, and deal with the technology and figure out where to post it and all this kind of stuff, um, uh, you know, for something that takes the, 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 the reader three minutes or four minutes to read, right? So um, that's phoneblogger.net. Um, we have been looking for years for what's next. Um, I also had the concept of um, wanting to create a community and a community of like-minded professionals. And so we explored masterminds, we explored all kinds of things, but we realized, and I, and I went back even further and looked at my experience with Toastmasters, right. which were peers getting together, business professionals getting together to do something that was incredibly uncomfortable, incredibly uh, uh, annoying um, uh, initially, and that was public speaking. Right. And we supported and encouraged and uh, and had fun and gave feedback, et cetera, uh, in a meeting, you know, every week. And uh, when I gave my first speech 35 years ago, you know, was in a Toastmasters club. I stood up, had an anxiety attack and just about passed out. Wow. And fast forward a year and I was president of the club. We launched two other clubs. So I kind of, you know, fish took to water uh, right. with it. And but I never forgot that concept. This wasn't this wasn't a an official coaching program per se, but we were coaching each other, right? We were yes. supporting each other, encouraging us, each other. So we created video socials about three and a half years ago now, um, and I wanted it to be a community, and it has become that. And and I got to say, it's my life's work. Um, it is uh, it inspires me every day. Um, and um, if you're trying to do marketing via video, uh, you owe it to yourself to, to come as a guest, check it out. There's no cost. There's no obligation. It's videosocials.net and just click on the guest tab at the top of the screen, folks. Um, it is the difference that I'm trying to make. Um, and we make a difference for each other, all of us as members. And I'm, you know, probably the most engaged member because I've shot now just shy of 700 videos. So. Um, it's, uh, uh, we learn by doing and we learn yes. from each other, mm -hmm. you know, and, and so, um, it, it's just fantastic. And then the next extension of that, which is what we're building now, which is a video interview podcast. And just as you and I are doing now, we're having this podcast. Well, there is a myriad of logistics that's behind yes. pulling these things together and have them come off on a regular basis and have, have consistency. And then what do you do with it? And is there editing involved and, right. and, 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 and uh, episode art and all kinds of other stuff that, that's involved in that? That is videointerviewpodcast.com. So if you're at the point that you're looking to do and have conversations with others because it's so much more attractive and so much more engaging for an audience to listen in on our conversation with each other than it is just to be a talking head. Um, check out videointerviewpodcast.com. But really, you know, I did want I did want to come back to because there's again the parallels are just ridiculous between us. Mm -hmm. Um but um what what do you feel that's the most important thing that you can do to impact small businesses at this point? I mean, obviously you've got online marketing muscle, you're a coach, but where right. in that where, where, where's where's that highest impact part? Well, it's, it comes back to, we just revised our mission because of that very question. Mm -hmm. We looked at where we were going and why we were going there. After what we saw happen, let's just be quite frank and honest about this. These last couple of years were disastrous for small business. Yep. They popped a lot of people's balloons, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Was it fair or unfair? I don't think it was, but you're, you're welcome to make your own judgments, folks, on what you thought. I thought that the small business community was very unfairly treated and destroyed these last couple of years. I'm from New York. Mark, you're from New York. What we saw happen in here in New York is ridiculous. Unacceptable. Our leaders failed. I'm sorry. They did. They failed. So we looked at our mission and we said, you know what? I'm one guy is the way I look at it. 
but I had to do something. I have to do something. I mm-hmm. have certain gifts. I have certain talents. I know I do. Right. And I definitely have a, a ridiculous amount of passion for what I do. And that helps. Right. So we adjusted our mission. And part of that mission this year is to get in front of and inspire a million entrepreneurs, a million mm. growth minded entrepreneurs this year, 2023. You will see me everywhere in 2023 because of that. I will be right. very omnipresent this year, sharing my message, sharing my methodology, my system, how to get. I look at there's a couple of schools of entrepreneurs that are left over here. You got the ones that were able to weather the storm. Mm-hmm. They handled it. They're beat. They're beat down right now. So they are going to need to know how to adjust to adapt to this new business environment because it has changed. It's trained. It's changed drastically, dramatically, yeah. Yeah. right? Over to, over these past couple of years. And once it's stretched, it's not going back to the way it was. I'm sorry, folks. It's just not. So some things that may have worked five years ago may not work anymore. So I'm coming out with a much stronger message this year in 2023. And it's all about getting the eyeballs on that message. Give the gift of being able to help them understand Mm -hmm. what's the next step. What do I do now? How do I navigate this? How do I play in this arena today? Mm -hmm. Because it's different. I'm not sure if I like it. I'm scared. Mm -hmm. So our mission shifted to those million entrepreneurs, getting in front of a million entrepreneurs, getting in front of them getting this message, getting our methodology out in front of them, help them, being willing to talk them through it. So, and along with those ones who made it through, all those entrepreneurs who didn't make it through, they got, they got knocked out of the game. Now we look at those people and we say, once you're an entrepreneur, you're always an entrepreneur. So they're going to come back battle tested now, looking to start that next thing. What's that next thing? Now, what are the things I love about what you shared a few moments ago, Mark, and what I admire about what you and your partner Vic are doing, you're creating products that are for this next iteration. You're creating products that solve problems. It takes the guesswork out. It takes the challenge out. It takes the, I don't know if I can do this. I don't, I don't have the time. Baloney. You've made it so ridiculously easy that all they got to bring is their expertise. That's pretty simple, right? And now you got a team around you that can actually get it out in front of the eyeballs for you. So I love that and I resonate with it because it's right along with the mission that we're going after. Make this process easy, dumb it down. Business is simple. It's not easy, but it's simple. Get the clutter out of there. There's too much clutter going on. So we're going to demystify business this year with everything we're saying, with everything we're talking about. And we're lining up legions of folks around us who are also and aligning with people like you, Mark, who are, who are on a similar trajectory. We're on a path to help these folks yep. because they deserve it, right? Yep. They were un, unjustly and unfairly treated over the last couple of years. And then you've got this next iteration of entrepreneurs who are the new ones who haven't been one yet, but now realize corporate America ain't going to work for them. I need to, I'm not getting a job out of college. Nobody's hiring me. I need, to, I need to do something on my own. So this new iteration. And these kids are tech savvy. Yep. They're going to uh, adopt <laughs> and adapt to these technologies like AI much better, faster, cheaper than we did. Yep. We had to painfully learn this stuff. It wasn't as easy for us to climb into something that wasn't natural to us. Right. It, they're growing up on it. My kids don't know what it's like to grow up without a cell phone, a mobile device that you can get anything on. Yeah. You know, we didn't have them, right? <laughs> and when we were, right? When we were, in, we were owning our technology companies 20 years ago, we might have had a beeper. Remember beepers, <laughs> right? And we're dating ourselves. Well. Now, but I, I know, but it's like, again, yeah. understanding that the complexion, of the business environment has completely changed. So our mission we felt had to change and we realigned Mm -hmm. it around the big why, the big because, because we were pissed off about what we saw happen these last three years. And we knew that we know we can't fix everything, but you know what? I'll be damned if I don't try. 
I won't be able to sleep at night. I won't be able to live with myself if I don't do everything in my power to try and make a difference right now. Because I do believe people inherently are great and they're good people. They just need guidance. They need help. So we need to get out there and we need to help them. Right? Yeah. And, and, and it's, and it's, look, the paradigm has shifted. So we either shift with the paradigm and realize because every, it, before we, before we started recording, you know, we were, we were diving into a bit of a conversation about, you know, the paradigm has, has changed. Yes. Um, and, you know, where's it going? Uh, and, and how are we, you know, how are we going to, well, the, the fact of the matter is it's going to be whatever it's going to be. We get right. to have an influence on that, but it's going to be what it's going to be. We either adapt or we get left behind. Correct. Um, fair, unfair, reasonable, unreasonable. It, it's, I hate to say it, but it almost doesn't matter. What matter, what matters is, is that Look, my personal mission in life is I make a difference for those who make a difference in the world. That's right. me. That's that's what I that's what I I, I wrap everything around. Right. I really don't. I'm I'm really not concerned with trying to help somebody who's you know just in it for themselves or just you know. Look, we've all got to make a living. We've all you know we we've all got you know got to build a retirement. We've got to support our kids. We've got to want, get our kids launched through you know through college and everything else. So. Um, we need to be financially successful, but is what you're doing making an, a difference, making an impact is an, another phrase that you've used several times now. Uh, is it having a positive impact on your local community and the, global, and, and the global community? And that's who I think both of us serve uh, yes. best is those who are, who are trying to have that positive impact um, on the world around us. So um Fantastic. So b before I forget it, because I've got it written down, so I better <laughs> bring it up. Right. It's DeanMercado.com, OnlineMarketingMuscle.com. You're on LinkedIn at Dean Mercado, yes. and you're on YouTube at Dean Mercado. Right. And um, and we'll folks will have links uh, for all this associated, whether you're listening to this on a podcast or you're watching it on YouTube, whatever the case may be. So. Um, wanted to, wanted to get that in, so you, you don't have to remember all that. It it'll, it'll all be uh, it'll all be in there. But um, really, for you know, we could go on all day, my friend. I know. Um, but but I know. Uh, but I did want to hone in because you've mentioned methodology a number of times, yes. and right. and one of the things my original business coach and and best friend in the world, you know, taught me. 25, 30 years ago now, uh, was it wasn't about survive. He said, you know, look, if you survive business, and we sat down and tried to do the math, and it's like right. 90 something percent, you know, it's depressing, you know, of, of people that launch a business end up failing in the first 10 years, right? So at that time, I had another company and I had made it the 10 years. He said, that was a challenge. Great. But the next challenge is the bigger, is, is a far, far bigger one. And that right. is scaling, right? Right. And scaling requires methodologies, requires systems, requires processes, requires repeat, repeat, repeatability. Right. It requires being able to be counted on. Right. Right. Absolutely. I think bo both of us have, uh, you know, our favorite books. One of mine was is Raving Fans. Right. And, you know, basically the, the, the precept of that is it comes back to, provide exceptional customer service consistently. You know, it's funny. I remember you loving that book back in the day. <laughs> I remember that because we had conversations around uh -huh. that book. That's, that's awesome. So that's, it's cool to know it's still impacting. And I agree. Absolutely. Still with me as well. one of, well, probably one of the most impactful uh, books that, 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 that I ever took on because it, look, I'm of the belief system that your customer service, your client service, is the best marketing tool you've got. Yes. Right. So um, because that makes word of mouth, that makes referrals possible, right? Yes. People are not going to refer you if they can't count on you to deliver for whoever they're going to refer you to. Right. True, true. Right. Very so true. Um, and that requires systems and process and methodology. So what makes Correct. your methodology different? Right. Well, 
I wholeheartedly agree with you, first off, that it is about that. It is about being able to systemize. It is about being able to create something that not only can grow, but can scale at some point. Um, if it's worth doing, folks, do it great. Or maybe choose something else to do. You know, right. I hate to say it that way, but that's the truth of it, right? We can create something from a scarcity mindset or something from an abundance mindset. It's up to you. You choose, right? So with Clone the Owner, which is the name of our, our main methodology, uh, I could actually show you a visual. Looks something like this. And let's get that straight so people can see it. Eh, there we go. It's a little better, right? Yep. As you yep. can see, in the center of this is a vision, right? Every business has to have a vision. That vision stems from the leader of that team, the leaders of that team, right? Where are we going? Point the direction. Where are we going? And why mm -hmm. are we going there? What's so important that we get there? Without yeah. a vision, you're creating a business without a solid foundation, right? It's a house of cards, which can very easily tumble at any point. Because what happens as you start growing and you start scaling, things can collapse easy because you start getting different people on your team that have a different idea of where we're going and why. They're not in it for the same reason. When the team aligns, well, and, right? Go ahead, please. It, yeah, and I, and I wanted just to, just to bring in, because you just said it, um, you know, the critical part of vision that a lot of people forget is the why. Yes, hugely important. Why are you yes. doing it? Absolutely. Right? Because the why can carry, the why, having that crystallized where you're going, but right. why you're going there is the fuel that will take you there. Correct. Go ahead. <laughs> it is. You're 100% you're right. And if you heard nothing else here today, folks, listen to what Mark just said. That why is your fuel. And everybody needs to use the same fuel. Because if you have team members that are driven by something completely different, they have a different yep. agenda, it's going to show up in how your customer service appears for your clients, right? So that vision sits at the core of our methodology. Getting companies crystal clear on what their vision is, is hugely important. I could teach you every marketing tactic and strategy on the planet right now. I've been around the block. I've done them all. Some are better than others for this person or for that person, right? However, your vision, if your vision is, is solid and sound, most of what you take on, if you take massive action with whatever you do do, tends to be better. Because everything's moving in the same and in the, in the direction. We're all rowing together. Yep. We're not rowing against one another at that point. So around this system, as you'll see, you see systems, teams, and controls. Systems, mm -hmm. team, and controls. Those are three huge elements. We talk a lot on the concept of systems. Right, our ebook that we're giving away on our website it's called Clone Owner. This is about the framework of systems. Mm -hmm. How do you systemize your business? What's a six step framework you can use to systemize your business? Well, that's in this. Go get it, it's free. My compliments, enjoy it. Happy to answer whatever questions you might have around it. Um, if you can't systemize your business, you don't get that repeatable execution of anything. Yep. Right? Clone the owner is all about leverage. It's all about getting leverage on your business, whether that's through the systems you create, whether that's through the team you hire. It's about getting leverage on your business because that's where the money's made. If you think that you have broad shoulders and you can do it all by yourself, good luck. You've created a job for yourself. And if that's all you want, fine. I'm not going to argue with you. That's cool. I tried that. I've done that for many years and realizing that I'm not getting any younger. And it's getting more painful. And as broad as my <laughs> shoulders are, you know, do I really want to do that anymore like that? Or do I want to take the selfishness out of the picture a little bit and allow other people to step in and help and become part of something bigger as opposed to just me right. being a team of one? So the concept of systems is huge for us where we talk about, well, how do you systemize a business? How do you identify the different kinds of systems that every business has. And I primarily focus on service businesses when mm -hmm. with online marketing muscle. So uh, we do have you know, some in the e-commerce vein, but that's not my sweet spot. My sweet spot is service. Mm -hmm. I know service, I breathe service, I live service. I'm a service business. It's what I do, 
Right. Right. So, and I've done it for a long time. So creating those systems is hugely important. Creating the right team, developing the right team. I can't stress how hugely important that is. Yeah. Right. Being slow to hire, quick to fire. Right. As part of our vision, we also include things like core values. We hire and fire based on our core values. I don't care how much talent someone has. If they don't align with our core values, they're not getting hired by us. Let them get hired by the company that fits their core values. They'll do better there. If I'm going to be so selfish to hire somebody just because they got talent, but they obviously don't align with the way we think, I'm not doing them a service or us at the Sorry, end of the I day to... or our clients. Please. Yeah, and, I know and you and get I, this. I, <laughs> and I, I boil it down to um, hire for character develop skill. You bet. Absolutely. Spot on. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's, you want the right people, you know, and uh, Jim Collins, uh, good to great, I think. Um, right. Get the right people on the bus and in the right seats. Uh, right. But it's the right people on the bus. Right. right. Absolutely. And I can't tell you how many people that we've, that we've brought on over the years and they've moved seats. That's right. Because they were the right people. Correct. Right. So I, and, yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So I look at that and I, I firmly agree. And I look at aptitude, right? Aptitude and attitude are two of the biggies for us, mm -hmm. right? I could teach you a skill. If you have the right aptitude to learn that skill, I could teach you any skill in that vein of your aptitude. No problem. Right. And I don't mind doing that for the right attitude, right? But when I do that for the wrong attitude, the wrong core values, right? What happens is that person doesn't stay. Or we get rid of them quickly because we realize very quickly, I can't work with that person. We don't resonate. We're constantly doing this. Right. So when we talk about cloning the owner, we're talking about leverage. And that conversation, what cloning the owner came out of, came out of all of that coaching I was saying earlier. Mm -hmm. um, it came out of conversations with clients where clients would say, man, if I just had 10 of me, if I just <laughs> had 10 of me, my business would be great. Everything would be awesome. And, and I got to thinking about that and stewing on that and chewing that around. And out of that came clone the owner. Well, how do we clone the owner? We clone them by getting the, the knowledge and wisdom out of their head and into a concrete system and process that somebody with the right attitude and aptitude can yep. follow. They could be trained on. They could follow. They can be educated around, right? So your team, your systems, and it goes in a circle. Then we have what we call controls. Controls mm -hmm. are the mechanisms that we measure are our teams and systems working. If we don't have measurements, we don't have metrics, we don't have numbers, you don't have a business, folks. You've got to know your numbers because the numbers never lie. The numbers tell the truth. So, um, and we've all fall vic fallen victim to this. I have. I've had people on my team and, you know, my wife who happens to be my business partner and she's also, you know, very involved in when we talk about who's on our team and what we're doing and all of that fun stuff. I've had arguments with her, you know, in a business vein, we keep business and personal separate that way. Thank goodness. Right. But, uh, we've had arguments where she'd be like, you know, we got to get rid of this guy. And I'd be like, but I love him. He's great. We have so much fun. Well, she's like, well, go freaking go have a beer with the guy, <laughs> you know, go have a beer with him then. But he can't work here. His core values are different than our core values, than the core values of the company. We don't fit. Let him follow his path. Stop being so stingy. Let him go. Let him find what he's meant to find. And that, again, was coaching I needed to get right. over the years. And it was like, okay, get out of your own way, Dean. You know, um, let other people actualize. Let them self-actualize. Let them find what they're destined for. Stop standing in their path, in their way. Be willing We're to trying to the bend, trying to bend them into something that you want them to be, rather than Correct. who they are and who they Correct. want to be. Right. So painful it, lesson. It's painful a really, <laughs> it's a very you know, costly, um, very painful lesson. And and Dean, I, we literally could go on all day, buddy. I know. Um, but it's we insane. we do we we do need to, we do need to wrap it up. So folks. Go get because I'm as soon as this is over, I'm going to go get the clone the owner uh, uh, ebook and uh, and 
what, what was the what was the other one on um, the systems? And that is uh, the Colonial Owner ebook. This particular ebook covers the systems framework. Covers it, co okay, excellent. Right? So, if you want right. to see this system and learn a little bit about it, there is a page called Our Approach on Online okay. Marketing Muscle, and you you could read a little bit about this approach in particular. But we knew that getting a framework down makes things easy. Giving people a, a paint by numbers, follow this, uh, makes it a little easy to start the systemizing. Yeah. Because without that, yeah. you can't get leverage and you need leverage in order to become more yep. profitable, better, yep. faster, cheaper, to compete yep. with what is out there now. Remember, yep. you've got a youth coming up now that can run circles around us older folks uh, like it's going out of style. On the technology, technology wise, especially. yep, right, yep, yep. So, um, stay competitive, Dean, buddy. Um, so great to reconnect with you. Um, Likewise. your your enthusiasm is absolutely infectious. Um, and uh, just really glad that, that that you came on today. Um, again, deanmercado.com, online marketing muscle.com, Dean Mercado on, on YouTube, Dean Mercado on uh, LinkedIn, and uh, do take advantage of uh, that wonderful uh, free ebook, and, and I and I commend you uh, for making this because I know that you've got a lot of content between these sites and your and your online presence. There's a lot of of, of a wealth of information, so uh, do take advantage of it, folks. Um, Dean, great to see you, buddy. Oh, Mark, it's been awesome, and let's not wait another I don't know how many years. <laughs> definitely, De definitely. I, I, I could definitely. feel the vibration man and there's something yeah. that when we talk that vibe happens you know and maybe yeah. because when we were talking back in the day it was so impactful i don't know whatever it is but thank you for that i greatly well, appreciate thank you it. It inspires yeah. Yeah. You know? thank thank you and and it and it is the conversation right it, it is it is um it is a it, its own form of community yes no doubt all right buddy you take care you as well take care man You've been listening to Inspiring Business with your host, Mark Bullock. Your positive comments, likes, and most importantly, your sharing of this show with others is greatly appreciated. Don't forget to subscribe to the Inspiring Business Podcast on whatever platform you prefer. You can catch prior episodes on videosocials.net and on YouTube, LinkedIn, Facebook, and all the major podcast platforms.